everybody, welcome back to Rain and Pause. I'm Mitch and in today's video I'm going to show you how to blow out your blooms properly so that you can get beautiful cells and consistent lacing. So let's get to it. In this video I'm demonstrating how to get your blow correct. So I've already made sure that my pillow paint and my colours are all at the correct consistency and this is very important because if they're not that can affect how much your blow is successful. So I've got my pillow paint here. To my canvas I'm going to add one and a half tablespoons of pillow paint. My pillow paint is at a 5-6 to six second trace consistency and I have a video explaining what that means on my channel. I'll link it below. So I put down 1.5 tablespoons on there. Next I'm going to start layering on my colours. I'm going to start with some Naphthol Crimson Red. Some This Little Piggy Sockeye. This Little Piggy Mango. This little piggy nightfall. I have some Matisse Magenta Quin Violet and some This Little Piggy Harvest Gold. I'm also going to put just a little bit of the magenta underneath my cell activator to hold it up a little bit better. Now, it's very important that you make sure your puddles are centered before you apply your cell activator. When you're blowing out your paints, you don't want to think of blowing out a candle. What that means is you don't want it to be a sudden gust of wind, like a <sighs> You want it to be a slow and steady stream of air, sort of like you're blowing a sailing boat across, the, across a pond. So, <sighs> it should be a nice, gentle, steady stream. Things you want to think about is you're going to start up nice and high. I recommend about 20 inches or 50 centimeters away from your surface. So if my board is down here, I'm about that far away. So maybe a full head height. And you want to start up high with a slow, steady stream and aim for your cell activator in the middle. Once you can see that your cell activator is spreading out, you increase the pressure of your blow and move your head back. So you'll go down, slow and steady, bring it up and increase the pressure. As you do that, your cell activator will spread across your colors and you'll get lovely cells all around. Once you have done that and you want to blow out your petals, you don't want to go too close, otherwise you'll get really thin, elongated petals. You want to think of being a little bit further away with a little bit more pressure in your blow and what that will do is will widen the area that your breath is getting to and will make nice, beautiful, wide petals rather than those thin ones. So let's go back down and I'll demonstrate what I mean. So putting the cell activator in the middle and once you've got that down you want to be quick about this as your cell activator will sink. So long slow steady stream down expand that cell activator as you bring your head up and then blow out the petals. The motion I'm making with my head is down, scoop, and passing that cell activator across the surface. I'm not blowing directly down, and I'm not blowing directly sideways. It's more of a diagonal swipe across. Now if we go back down, you can see that there's still an area of cell activator concentrated in the middle. You can break that up by puffing on it gently with your mouth, or using a long thin tool like this. This is just the end of an eyedropper that I bought from uh, the chemist. It had a puffer on the end which I took off and I just used this to break up my cell activator and I'll show you how. So I'm making sure I'm not too close to the canvas or the tile or whatever surface you're blowing on. I'm not too close, I'm not too far away, and I'm making sure that that point of air is more like a cone rather than the pinpoint. So now let's spin this one out and see how it turned out. It 
it's very important as you're doing this that you make sure you spin off enough paint from your surface so that it doesn't crack while it's drying. And here you can see a beautiful tile ready to go. Let's do another one. Clean off your surface and let's get ready to go again. So we'll do the same color order that we had to start with, starting with our white pillow, one and a half tablespoons or approximately that. We're going in with our naphthol crimson. This little piggy sock eye. This little piggy mango. This little piggy nightfall. Matisse magenta quin violet. And this little piggy harvest gold. This time I won't put any of that magenta underneath the cell activator and let's see what result it gives us. So again, I'm going to put my cell activator straight on and blow this out right away. Starting up high, aim for that center, bring your head back as you widen that center and then blow out your petals like this. of gentle puffs to open up that cell activator. Now what happened at the beginning of this bloom, I didn't get any cells on this side. And that was because I blew too hard on the edge rather than on the cell activator. So one thing to do once you've expanded that circle is start at the side closest to you of the cell activator and gently blow it over itself. That will allow that cell activator to slide across the surface more easily and you'll end up with beautiful cells and lacing. So let's spin this one out. Now at any point you can stop spinning if you are noticing that your cell activator is still clumping. Use your little tool to blow that out. When I'm spinning my blooms, I like to keep a cup with a spatula handy so I can scrape up all the excess paint and use it for later. I keep colours of a similar colour scheme in one, one container. For example, this one is more tended towards the red base, so this will give me a nice pale pink pillow paint. Again, making sure that enough paint has been taken off. The way I check for that is by gently tilting the paint to the side and if the center doesn't move very much, it's ready. Now let's do another. This time I'll take you in a little bit closer. Okay, let's start with our pillow paint again. One and a half tablespoons. Add that five to six second trace. Now this time, let's start with purple on the bottom and see what that does. So we're doing this little piggy nightfall. We'll go to this little piggy mango. This little piggy sock eye. Just on your naphthol crimson light. This little piggy harvest gold. and Matisse Magenta Quin Violet. Place our cell activator down and get ready to blow.
Again, just using my little tool to blow out that cell activator, start getting those cells to create in the middle, as you can see happening there. And we'll give that a second to settle before we spin that out. Again, scraping up any excess and continuing to spin. Not enough paint taken off this one, so we'll give it another really good spin. Get all that paint flattened off, look how much came off that time. Let's do one more coaster, but this time, instead of using my mouth, I'll demonstrate how to do that with an electric blower. Now you may have seen these being used in art before. This is called the world's smallest blower. You can get these on Amazon, in some of your tech shops, we get them here in Australia from JB Hi-Fi. They're very handy, they're powered by USB, and if you've got weak lungs or respiratory problems, these can be your lifesaver when doing blooms. So I'll show you how to use that in your bloom pores. First off, start like we always do with our pillow paint. One and a half tablespoons for a four inch tile is plenty. I'll be doing another video shortly showing you exactly how much paint to put on each uh, size canvas or surface that you're working on and a quick tip on how to make sure that you get the right amount of paint every time. Let's go on with our naphthol red light, our this little piggy sock eye, this little piggy mango, this little piggy nightfall, Matisse Magenta Quin Violet. And our Harvest Gold. Now we put our cell activator on and I'll show you how to blow it out with this. It's the same principle. Start up high, find the center, give it a good blow around and blow out your petals. In some ways, it could be much easier to blow out your blooms with an electric device rather than using your lungs, as your hands have much more control than your mouth does. But you do tend to end up with more patches of unblown out cell activator if you do use the blower. Easily fixed, use your straw. As you can see there, I'm not blowing all the way through to the bottom of my pillow. I'm just looking for that cell activator to open up and form those little cells. They will eventually grow out and become bigger cells. And here we have another perfect coaster, blown out with the world's smallest blower instead of our mouth. As you can see, it gives a great result.
So there you have it everybody, that's how you blow out your Shelly Art Blooms. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!